to ellisnatch.com to win this. We're giving away this 1200 horsepower turbo trans -Am. What's up, y'all? It is a gloomy, rainy Saturday weekend. We are here in the shop. A lot of work getting done. Shout out to Mason and Logan putting in work. We got two badass transmissions out, and they're going to be heading to m and Transmissions to get serviced. Um, yeah, that's, that's what we got going on. This one needs a dump and needs to be completely gone through. This one is all working and needs to be completely gone through. Uh, we've had a couple uh, failures due to a converter coming apart and then fluid getting pumped through both of these guys. It's my mistake. I didn't know the converter was damaged. Probably shouldn't be sharing uh, coolers from car to car, but we did. And this one had the initial converter failure. So this engine, or sorry, this transmission's had a lot of passes on it. This one was good. Started acting funny, started to overheat, started leaking out of some weird spots, send that stuff back to Eminent Transmission. So you live and you learn. That's what racing's about. You guys can learn from my mistakes so you don't have to make them on your own. I filmed this entire video with BJ, and then I accidentally deleted the footage off the SD card. So very unfortunate, but here we are. You guys remember BJ's Malibu? We are doing a turbo kit on this thing. Hell yeah, shout out to BJ. It's like a 590 inch big block getting a large frame 106 millimeter turbo. This combination right here should be a load of fun. What we're trying to do is lower the overall cost of just running the car at the track, have more fun, less maintenance. And I think that's pretty much a good, a good place to start. This has been a nitrous car. He ran it, did pretty good. Worked on it a lot. Nitrous is extremely expensive. All of us are turbo people. So BJ is coming over to the dark side with the turbochargers. Now this is an old turbocharger we had sitting around here for a while. This thing has been in the shop for years. And it's a large frame, 106. I think it's going to be a good combination for what we're trying to do. Not trying to go threes. Just trying to go out there. Have a good, solid, good running car consistent go down track every time and you know if it has a turbo on it, it's probably fast enough to beat up on a nitrous car you already got the headers pulled off as you can see these things are absolutely massive usually on the turbo stuff you want to try to keep the uh the collector as close to the primaries or, or really just the header flange as possible to keep all the heat in there but the longer ones this thing is going to have so much ass because the motor's so large and it's such a giant air pump that spinning this turbo will not be an issue at all. So let's talk about building turbo kits. I'm gonna give you guys a crash course, a breakdown, start to finish head to toe. When you look at a car, if you're gonna do your first turbo kit, this is kind of what you need to get started. It's very simple. A lot of people are intimidated by the turbo stuff just because they've never done it before. Uh, just like I'm intimidated by the blower stuff because I haven't really done it before. But I've been around the turbo stuff for a very long time and it's really not complicated if you just break down piece by piece look at the, the big picture motors and air pump we have to use the air coming out of the motor to spin the back side of the turbo which is then connected to the the front side of the turbo with a shaft which is going to pump fresh air into the motor so it's a good old nice little happy ecosystem there of air getting pumped in and out of the motor first thing we need to do is figure out our diameter of tubing so this is a big ass motor most of the big block stuff we've done, Slick Rick is a 570 inch motor. I did my 500 inch big block. This is a 590 inch motor. We're gonna go with a three and a half inch hot side. So most of the, like the other stuff, some of the street car stuff like this, two and a half inch is relatively normal. You can make plenty of power on a two and a half inch hot side. Some of the, the bigger, more higher horsepower stuff like the Black Sheep, we do a three inch hot side this being so big we don't want the drive pressure we don't want to, it to get constipated to get backed up because it's trying to evacuate so much air that it can't get it out we're going to go with three and a half inch which will work great because we're going to just cut the flanges off these headers here we're going to weld some three and a half inch v-bands on there 
and make it all work. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pretty much walk you guys through how we're gonna do this and we're gonna lay the groundwork, the roadmap, so we can get all the parts ordered up that we need. I have already ordered most all of the parts or have the parts here so we can get started next week, but this is just going to be an informative video for you guys to when you get your motor in your car, you stand in front of me, you say, okay, now it's time to build the turbo kit. Where do I start? First thing you need to look at, turbo placement. Are we running a radiator? Do we have any water pumps? Do we have anything that is going to make it where we cannot put that turbo exactly where we want? We want to put this guy right here. So let's take a look. What's in the way? Ooh, absolutely nothing. We're going to have to move one bar on the front end support, the Christmas tree, and then we should be good to go. That will not be an issue at all. We'll just lop that off at the top and bottom, and we'll put two in there diagonal, and it will be great. So we know the turbo is going to go smack dab in the middle. We need to hold the turbo up. I don't like having the hot side hold the turbo itself on these big, massive, large frame turbos. So we're going to get a Maven mount. So it's going to go from one side to the other, support the turbo on the drain side and drain out the bottom. So our turbo drain mount has already been ordered. It's a large frame Maven mount style turbo mount. So we know where we're going to place it. Next thing, the flange. That is a, let's look, T6 flange. I have a T6 flange right here from Parker Speed. Love these. Highly recommend if you guys are building a turbo kit, get you a Parker Speed T6 flange, T4 flange, she makes them in single three inch, she makes them in two and a half inch, dual two and a half inch, she makes them in dual three inch like this one. Like I said, we are doing dual three and a half inch, so he's actually making a custom one. We're going to do some R&D for it, and I guess like the, the, the topic of conversation is, man, what's the point of running a larger hot side if the inlet, the T6 inlet, is the same diameter? Listen. I don't know, but everyone said run three and a half inch. I've run three and a half inch and all my big motor stuff, so we're going to do it. So, uh, Jared Parker down at Parker Speed is making a custom three and a half inch dual inlet, and it is it's a bit more aggressive. Like if you if you put that up there, you'll see how it fits good, and you see how this is all sloped down. The three and a half inch, you know, is going to stick out quite a bit further. It's going to be bigger all around. I am not an expert fabricator. I like using this because it makes it very easy to weld your tubes to the flange and it's a lot easier than making a a merge the making the merge is by far the most difficult part like i said i'm not an expert fabricator i just know how to stick some stuff together so we have a dual three and a half inch flange on the way which i'm excited about because that's going to make my life easy so we got our turbo location picked out we got our turbo mount picked out we have our t6 flange picked out We'll put the headers on here. We'll swap those V-bands. Or sorry, yeah, we'll get rid of those big-ass V-bands. We'll put some 3.5-inch V-bands on there, and then we will run the tubing, the hot side, to it. So we need to go probably 190, some straight, and another 90 in on each side. So four 90s, one piece of straight. We'll order two 45s as well. And then I think I have some other miscellaneous parts sitting over there. So we're, we're getting the hot side done first. The turbo location is important because you can't start building your hot side unless you know where it goes. We already have the headers, so we're just going to weld from there to there, from there to there, and then the hot side should be done. It's not nearly as confusing as you think it would be, would it? Let's see here. Hot side done, placement's good, we got room for exhaust. We haven't even started talking about that yet. That That's really not nearly as important as, as all this stuff. All right, charge pipe. I like running a nice, big, large charge pipe. Four inch is like the go-to. The real big, big, big stuff, if you're running the 123 millimeter throttle body, if you're running like the Visner oval style throttle body, go up to the five inch. Uh, the, the theory behind it is when the throttle body is open, your plenum volume, right, which is not too big on a carb style, but when you open the throttle body, your plenum volume is all the way down to the turbo all the way down to the compressor wheel. So, the larger diameter, the better flow, the larger plenum, the more horsepower you can make. For what we're trying to do here, four inch is absolutely perfect. We're going to go 45 down off this guy, 45 over, and then probably 90 into the turbo right here. So a very short, compact charge pipe look very similar to the Black Sheep. I just did one for Chase's car. Should work really good. So we got our hot side and our cold side done. Now we need to regulate boost. BJ's got two 
60 millimeter blow off valves, 150 mil. Sorry, he's got two 60 millimeter wastegates. So for the three and a half inch stuff, what we'll do is we'll get the Motion Raceworks uh, wastegate saddles. And I've done it before. Let me see if I got any over here. They're they're extremely nice. Uh, I highly recommend using them. They make them for straight tubing or for in a bend and you get the ones for the three inch tubing and then you just kind of flap disc the shit out of them until they fit i don't know i have so many i got like this is my v-band clamp section i got some o-rings i got some nuts i got some flanges for some two and a half inch stuff i got some stainless here i got a t6 flange a wagon style clamp her on speed wastegate let's see here what do we got Two and a quarter inch stuff to build headers, some more flanges, some stainless. I think this is, what is this? What do we have here? Is that four inch? This might be some three and a half inch stuff. Yeah, so we already got some three and a half. I think this is three and a half inch. This is good. So this is what the, the God, that is massive compared to the three inch stuff. Awesome. Yeah, because that's four inch and that fits inside of it. Meaning that would be three and a half inch. Oh, okay, here we go. What do we got over here? Another Parker Speed flange. This is their Parker Speed's uh, dual two and a half inch inlet. So this is like for more of the streetcar style stuff. Uh, you know, Hank has got some pretty small stuff on there and it's making, you know, 15, 1600 horsepower. So don't think because you're building a turbo kit, you have to do three inch. Uh, you can get away with a two and a half inch, no problem. And it'll save you some room and some money. Um, I don't think I have any flanges. Here is some three inch stuff. Is this, is this three inch? Might be three and a half. Dude, might three and a half inch stuff. Let's see here. Three inch. Three inch. Oh, look at this! Look what we found! I knew I had them. So these right here are absolutely awesome. As you can see, they fit perfect on the three inch, right? Fit absolutely perfect. On the three and a half inch, it's just a little bit of sanding down here on the uh, on the flange just to get it to expand big enough to go on there. And boom, your wastegate merge stuff is already done. That is awesome that I got these here. This is all the stuff for the Bad Apple, if I can remember correctly. Shout out to Stainless Bros. Uh, they be hooking it up. We have, they, they have the baddest material uh, by far. What's this? This is their two and a half inch stuff. Yeah, the two and a half inch for the streetcar stuff. You gotta love it. All right, sorry, I got sidetracked. So we're gonna run two 60 millimeter waste gates with the motion flanges. And it's very important that you guys don't put those on right away. I like to have the exhaust built so I like to have the charge pipe, the hot side, and the exhaust all built before I put my waste gates on there because your waste gates, they need to be, you know, downstream, but you could be very flexible about where you put them. And then the blow-off valve, I like to put the blow-off valve, I don't know, so it really depends. We're not going to run any charge pipe injectors on this, so I'm not worried about it. So I'll probably put the blow-off valve right here. If you are running injectors in the charge pipe, the blow-off valve has to be in front of it. So you don't have atomized fuel in the boost when it lets go you just missed you pretty much have external combustion we we are trying to avoid that at all costs all right the last thing that we have not talked about is the exhaust uh, we're gonna try to do dual exhaust but depending on how the hot side runs with the headers the headers bring the exhaust kind of like down here uh, we're really gonna have to look and see what room we have available uh, ideally we'd like to do a dual five inch exhaust that will then go out the existing holes but that is going to be what we do after the hot side and the cold side are already done because the exhaust is not critical to the performance we just need to evacuate the exhaust out of the vehicle so if we can't that goes kind of down to a wants and needs we would like to have it out the side but if we can't we understand and we will work around it so i'll sit down at my desk we'll get a parts list together and this is kind of what it takes you guys need to be able to sit there and look at it brainstorm uh kind of have an idea of what you guys want to do with the turbo kit stuff every car is different i will say the race car stuff is a piece of cake compared to doing the street car stuff where you got radiators and uh ac compressors and power steering pumps all that stuff makes it more and more difficult if you look at these two turbo kits i mean they are very simple um yet they look really good uh, this one here, as you can see, this one's kind of got a custom mount that Matt drew up in CAD. Uh, we had T-Camp Performance cut it out. It's all billet steel, um, three and a half inch T7 flange, which looks great. Uh, Steven at Rock Solid Motorsports absolutely killed it. Dieter's custom finishing with the polish. If you guys have any turbo kits, 
uh, any headers, bull horns, I highly recommend you go and get them polished because it really elevates your build to the next level. Uh, we got the Turbo Smart waste gates and blow off valves. They are by far the best. Uh, they're fuel pressure regulators, they're oil pressure regulators. Everything Turbo Smart makes, absolutely killer. Um, yeah, so uh, this turbo kit here, use it for some inspiration. Uh, this one doesn't have the motion saddle on it, neither does this guy over here. The Black Sheep, the OG, again, Dieter's Custom Finishing. Don't look at the turbo kit, it is not polished uh, right now. Sorry, don't look at the turbo or the charge pipe, but the hot side is just shining and it looks great. So it's pretty tough to, to beat that. If you go over here to Hank, this is like... Uh, one of my first creations it's got the motion race work saddles on there it's two and a half inch hot side titanium exhaust from tiss fab uh, this one here has the intercooler up front rear mount radiator single blow off valve uh, very 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 simple very i mean it's just it's just a solid just a solid little setup i, I haven't got this stuff polished yet i'm not sure if i'm going to just because i don't have a hood for it yet and i drive it on the street and i know it will get dirty but yeah this one here turbo kit wise you look at it very simple. It's all about keeping them simple. Get air from engine to turbos, back from turbos to the engine, and then get the exhaust outside the car. So um, let's get sit down at the desk real quick, and uh, we'll get a kind of parts list together what we need. All right, y'all. So I got a little list together of some stuff that you need for doing the turbo kit. Uh, first of all, you need the name of the car. It's very important you know the name of the car before you're buying parts. So that's rush hour. Um, we need on the hot side, right? This is just from looking at it understanding what you need obviously the whole hot side can't just be attached to the headers so we need two 3.5 inch v-band assemblies you're looking for the male and female side with the clamp so let's go with clamp so that's race parts rps race parts solutions um we already got a bunch of the stainless here, so I don't think we actually even need to order stainless. Uh, we're going to get uh, two uh, motion um, wastegate saddles, wastegate saddles. Probably gonna do them in the bend. I'm not sure if I, I mean, we might put them in the straight. So I'm gonna hold off to ordering those because I don't know whether I want the ones that are gonna be in the bend or in the straight, but we're going for the three inch and we will modify those for the three and a half inch. We already got the T6 flange, so pretty much the whole hot side is covered up. We got our material, we got our V-bands, we got our clamps, we got our T6 flange. That's pretty much everything for the hot side. Uh, we already have the Maven mount ordered, so I'm not going to put that down on the list. I already have chromoly here to make the tubing. So we're good with that. We already got the turbo, so we're good with that. So the whole hot side and the turbo and the mounting of the turbo is done. So I'm going to draw a big line there. Let's go to um, the cold side. We already have the blow-off valve, so it already comes with the flange for the blow-off valve. We need to get some aluminum, so we're going to do, um, let's go uh, times two, times two. We'll do some 90s, some 45s, so we'll have four. I get all my aluminum from Race Parts Solutions. I like using their stuff. I can get 11 gauge, which is a little bit thicker. Uh, it makes it a whole lot stronger. You could weld it a whole lot hotter and make it just way more rigid and make way more reliable. Some of the thinner stuff, uh, especially like the Chinese stuff off eBay, I've seen where like you just literally blow the whole like blow off out flange off. Um, so we're gonna do 11 gauge on both of those. Uh, and they have really long legs on them too, so you don't have to order any straight because in order to get the bend that you want, a lot of times you have to cut the leg off, but then you're left with like a good three or four inch piece of straight. And I think just the way that that is set up, it, it should be perfect. Um, 11 gauge aluminum. And I'm gonna get all of my V-bands as well, my V-bands assembly stuff from Race Parts Solutions as well, so that's RPS. Uh, I need to get uh, one four inch v-band assembly which will weld to the outside of the turbo compressor cover that way you're not welding anything directly to it that whole piece is removable so we need uh, one times uh, four inch aluminum v-band assembly most of his v-band assemblies and the aluminum they come with an o-ring in them which is really nice because you don't have to 
You put an RTV in them every time you take them on and off. Also, there's badass stuff in, in dealing with Wade's. Very nice. So that's RPS as well. It's got a male side on the throttle body, so we just need to get uh, times one. We need a female four inch V band. And then we need times one, one four inch V band clamp. All right. I have a bunch of aluminum here. I need to get uh, a aluminum O2 bunks. We're gonna do aluminum exhaust. Uh, I'm gonna wait before I really go in and order the exhaust stuff because we're gonna probably run a Y from Steven at Rock Solid Motorsports. He makes absolutely awesome, you know, we, we've run them on the Colorado, we've run them on the Sheep, uh, where he will do the prefabricated Y because that takes a lot of skill and knowledge. It already has your, your large frame turbo flange on it, uh, and then we'll figure out what we'll do. I'm not gonna order that now because if something comes up where it can only run one exhaust one way instead of running the Y, there's no point to buy it. So I think we got a pretty good understanding of what we need parts wise. I just keep visualizing in my head where everything needs to go and how it's gonna go and keep your options open because nine times out of 10, it's not gonna happen exactly how you want it. So you have to be flexible, understand some things have to go where they have to go. Other things can go where they fit. So that's kind of walking you guys through. If you guys are at home looking at your car like, man, I need to do a turbo kit. I'm pretty much giving you the recipe. You need to get your V-bands for the headers. Other than that, I don't really like to have any sort of V-band in the hot side. I just want where it attaches to the headers and the flange should be one solid piece. Get you a nice uh, Parker Speed flange, whether you're doing a T4 or T6 turbo with three inch or three and a half or two and a half. Makes it very easy to weld out. They look good, they flow good. Everything's really good about them. Parker Speed and Maven, they both sell the turbo drain mounts. Uh, Parker Speed, I use a lot if I'm only gonna have it come out one side. Uh, I use the Maven if it's gonna come out on both sides. A large frame turbo hanging it that far forward, we're gonna come out on both sides. So we're gonna use a Maven large frame turbo mount. Um, I mean, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. You know you're gonna have to have your blow off valve and your wastegate. Normally when you order those, they'll come with the actual flange that you need. So you can either fabricate, you know, for your wastegate, for example, you could fabricate a tube off of it, or you can order the motion saddles, which I highly recommend. They're very nice and weld very good. Um, but yeah, so, so overall, I think we have pretty much everything we need here. I'm gonna hop on the computer, get this stuff ordered up. I hope you guys enjoy your Saturday. It is four times entries today on lsnasty.com to win our Turbo Trans Am, which already has all this stuff done for you. So go over to lsnasty.com and uh, every dollar you spend gets you four entries to win and you guys can be riding home in a 1200 horsepower Trans Am that you don't have to make the tur Turbo Kit for. So thank you guys so much. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in tomorrow's upload.